And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Now James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and they said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus replied, What do you wish for me to do for you? They answered, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, you, you do not know what you're asking for. Can, can you drink of the cup that I drink of? Or, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am about to be baptized? They said to him, we can. And Jesus said to them, then, then the cup that I drink you shall drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or my left is not mine to give, but for those for whom it has been prepared. Now when the other ten heard this, they became indignant at Jesus and, and, and James and John. Jesus summoned them all, and he said to them, you know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles love to lord it over them. And their great ones make their power and authority felt. It shall not be that way with you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be the servant of all. Whoever wishes first to be among you will have to be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for the multitude. The Gospel of the Lord. They're doing it again. Jimmy and Johnny are up to their old tricks. You know, they, they, they thought that Zebedee was the one who helped bankroll Jesus' uh, uh, travels and so the in the other gospel the synoptics the, the mommy of Jimmy and Johnny come up and ask Jesus the favor in Mark's gospel they come up themselves and they says we want you to do what we we want you to do what we want he says what do you want well one of us at the left and the other at the right and Jesus says you are clueless you have no idea what you're asking and then he asks the most profound question of them, and I, and I really believe, by extension, the most profound question of us as well. He, he says, uh, are, are you willing to be baptized with the baptism that I'm going to undergo? And, and, and are you willing to drink the cup that I am going to have to drink? Now, they said yes, but I, I'm, I'm sure they, they had no idea what they were saying yes to. And I think often we may be saying yes to, but don't always clearly understand what it is we are saying yes to. But what does it mean to be baptized into the baptism of the Christ? Now, now no one ever self-baptizes. Nobody pours the water over their head. We enter into baptism it's something that that happens to us and of course it usually follows the same pattern we go from the life of the individual in through the death of who we think we are and coming out a brand new radical person uh, saint paul says it so beautifully in romans he says are you are you not aware that you who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptism into his death. By baptism into his death, you were buried together with him so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, you might live a new life. And so we go in as an individual, but we come out of that baptismal bath as the Christ, as an altar Christus, as another Christ. And which means that we are now a member of a body, and it's a cosmic body. At this point, it's not, life is not about me anymore. At the moment of our baptism, life's not about me. I'm about life. I'm about the life of the Christ. And who is the Christ? Well, the Christ 
the cosmic Christ, are all the people who dwell on the earth and all of the animals and all of the trees and all of creation, all of Mother Earth, the solar system, that is the Christ. That is the Christ. And I am, I'm part of that now. And, and, and so when the Christ is filled with life and love and joy, I am filled with life and love and joy. And when the Christ is in pain, well, then I'm in pain as well. Uh, the, the body of, of Christ is both healed and in need of healing. The body of Christ is both broken and made whole. And of course, our model for healing, our model for redemption, is, is the man, Jesus himself, the human one. His favorite title, remember, is the Son of Man. The Son of Man basically means I'm the human one. I am fully human. I'm going to go through with you. And he is the Christ, the anointed one. He is the fullness of love incarnate in this human flesh. And so he, he takes this love, enters into his baptism, his death, in order to liberate the world. And that process continues on. It continues on. And, and as we, as we, we, we hear in, in Hebrews today, uh, we don't have one who was unable to, to sympathize with us, one who was unable to, to feel our pain, one who does not know our weakness, but one who is tested in every way. So we, we have one, we've got a model of knows, who knows our, our own brokenness, our own weakness, our own hurt, our own pain, and we are called now to enter into and dance with that same model. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer once said, uh, all people turn to God when they are sore bested, when they're hurt, when they're in pain. However, those who have been captured by Christ, those who have entered into Christ's baptism, uh, uh, are, uh, stand by God in when all who, who turn to God when they are sore bested. However, those captured by Christ turn to, Christ turn to God when God is sore bested when the divine presence in all of creation, when the Christ in all of creation is hurting and is in pain. They stand by God in God's hour of grieving, and God's is grieving in those who are suffering in our collective body. So we've got some work to do. And what is the work that we are called to do? We who are baptized into Christ Jesus are called to do what? Drink of the cup. Drink of the cup. It, it is the, the life has always been in the blood. And as followers of Christ, we are called to do what the Christ did. You know, James and John wanted to stand at the right and the left of Jesus when he came into his kingdom. Where does Christ rule the kingdom from? The cross. The cross. And who was at his right and his left in the place where he was ruling from? Suffering humanity. The, the two thieves, the two broken ones, the two who were also in pain. One who understood him, one who did not understand him but he's pouring out his life blood. At the consecration of the cup today, I will say the words of the Christ. This is the cup of my blood, which will be poured out. You know, the ancient symbol of Christ was a pelican. And the pelican would, would, would bruise its own chest if the brood if the nurslings were starving and feed them with her own blood. And, and, and so what Christ is doing is pouring out his life blood on behalf of the rest of humanity and we 
are called to do the same. It, it is the new and eternal covenant. That's the deal between God and ourself. It's not a transaction. There's, there's no if clauses in the covenant. He simply says, I will pour out my life to life, my divinity to divinity, my humanity to humanity. That's the pouring of the cup, and we are called to drink that cup unto the forgiveness of sin. Right? And that, that little piece is really an important piece. This is the cup of my blood which will be poured out for you and for ad multus in Latin, and that's the reason I always say for the, for the many, not just for one or for two or just for the chosen people, for the many, for the multitudes, for everybody. Why? Because the world is hurting. The world is hurting because of the sin of the world. And the question is, what is this, this sin of the world? I, I really believe the sin of the world is basically not getting the Christ. If God is love, and Christ is love incarnate, then the mechanism that makes the world go round is love. And that mechanism still has not been fully promulgated throughout the world. It still isn't quite working right yet. There still is work to be done. Uh, the sin of the world is those who say, I have power over you, either as an individual or as a group, and I will dominate over you as an either as an individual, as a group. That's the sin of the world, domination. The grace of the world is liberation. The grace of the world is pouring yourself out on behalf of the other. The sin of the world is the Taliban enslaving young women in the name of God. The sin of the world is the, is the civil unrest in Ethiopia where thousands right now today are literally starving to death. The sin of the world is the, the Haitians at our border who are being sent back to a life of, of misery. And I just heard on the news today that, that 17 missionaries were just uh, uh, kidnapped and are in grave danger for their own lives. The sin of the world the sin of the world is the undocumented worker indentured by the chicken processing plants in Mississippi. And the sin of the world is our mother, the earth, being degraded by her ungrateful children as we suck out the last drop of her life-giving milk. That's the sin of the world. Now the question of Jesus is the question for us. Can we drink of that cup? It's a bitter cup. It's not an easy cup to drink. It is not easy to swallow. And yet we are called to drink it if the covenant is to be fulfilled. But the cup, first and foremost, the cup, first and foremost, is a cup of compassion. Jesus poured out his life on behalf of all because he had compassio. He is compassion. And I think the older that I get, the more I'm utterly convinced that it is the most God-like quality of, of all. Uh, first and foremost, if we are truly to follow the suffering servant of Isaiah today, we need to help bear the wounds of the world. We indeed need to bind up the wounded and to heal the brokenhearted. We need, in a word, to get involved. But where do we begin? Uh, there, there doesn't seem to be much we can do in Ethiopia right at this moment. But a whole lot of a whole lot we can do for our sisters and brothers who are without shelter, without sustenance in our own backyard. We cannot single handedly 
solve the global warming problem, but we can, and I like this, we can hug a tree. I, I w was listening and, and heard the story of, a, of an Episcopalian priest who was a Native American Indian and an indigenous person in this country. And, and he says, you know, as, as a priest, when someone is sick, I lay hands upon them. And lately, I've been hand, put, laying hands upon the flora and fauna all around me. Hands upon my dog, hands upon the tree, and, and praying over the healing. Now, that's, that's a symbolic gesture. But if indeed we are connected, it's more than just a gesture. It's, it's the opening of ourselves to being interconnected with all of creation and all of reality. But what, what can we do? We can pray. That sounds, in the eyes of the world, as the, as the most useless thing we can do. And yet for those of us who have been praying all of our lives, we are aware of the fact that there is nothing more powerful on earth, for there is nothing that separates us between ourselves and the Ethiopian child who's starving to death. And so when I am fasting, I allow myself to feel her hunger, to share her pain, to share the suffering of the world. Uh, we we have our own hunger pangs and they can only be satisfied by being in communion and continuity with those who are suffering. And I used to think that Francis and Claire were highly romantic Italians because every week they would go to the outskirts of Assisi and they would weep and they would cry because they felt the pain of the world, of the suffering around them. That is being baptized into the baptism of Christ, and that is drinking from the cup of salvation. And so the question to the Christ is, are we willing to do it? Our answer is, and must be, yes. If we're to continue his work, if we're to continue the salvation of the world, we must.